because we're conceptual beings, because we require very abstract knowledge, for example, knowledge of morality, knowledge in epistemology, knowledge even about metaphysics, we all have to make choices about metaphysics. Do we believe the world is knowable? That makes a big difference to how you live. Do we believe, do we think the causality, you know, causality is real? Makes a big difference in how you live. Well, all of this philosophical knowledge is very hard to hold in your mind. Indeed, impossible to hold in your mind in every second of what you do. Now, principles help us. They condense this knowledge into sentences, into ideas, into words that we can hold. But even then, it's abstract, it's removed from the concrete, it's, it's not inspiring, and it's hard to run your life that way. Art serves the purpose of taking those white abstractions, those crazy abstractions, and making them real, concretizing them, making them a part of your life. And think about it this way. A beautiful painting, which is clear and crisp and describes something in the world out there that is clearly, it describes a world to you that is knowable, concretizes metaphysics in a way for you. It concretizes this idea that the world is knowable. Wow, look at what I can see in here. Look at the details. It focuses your attention on what the artist views as important, thus orienting you to look for what is important. If you go to a museum, go to a museum, a, a museum of, of, of great art from 19th century or previously, and just go look at five or 10 paintings and really focus and really see where your eye goes let your eye go where the artist wanted it to go. Usually they use light to, to move you around the painting. They use all kinds of techniques to emphasize where they want you to look. And start noticing things. Look around the podium. Why did the artist do this? Why did they do that? What's there? What's... When you go home, you'll suddenly look at your apartment or your home differently. It'll reorient the way you look at the world. So... Art serves this vital emotional function of giving our abstract concepts a reality in the world, an image of what it is. So it's really impossible for conceptual being not to have that. I mean, think about when you read a novel. I mean, I, I, my favorites here would be, I mean, other than Rand would be Hugo. And you're just absorbed in that world. You're sunk into it. You live in it. It inspires. It, it, it gives you energy and passion and because you love the characters in it. I mean, I just finished watching for the second time Mr. Sunshine. And man, was I sad when it ended. Because while I was in that universe, I was inspired by the heroism of the characters, by their benevolence, by their dedication to values, by their willingness to fight, no matter what the odds were, no matter what was at stake, to fight for those values, not willing to compromise or give up anything for those values, including when the values were important enough for their lives. I mean, that, to live in that world that is so inspiring, to live in that world which is, it just gives you energy to be able to do the rest of your day, the rest of your life. It helps you find meaning in your life. Find values in your life and give you the courage, the energy, the passion to pursue those values. That's what art does. And it's just fun. It's enjoyable. 
So I don't think you can have a fully flourishing, thriving life without arts. And I encourage you again to experiment, to try different things, to try different genres, to try different perspectives. And don't just stick to what you grew up with. Don't just stick to what you like today. Push yourself. Broaden your horizons. Challenge yourself. Read some art history. It's fascinating. Art history is fascinating. It's so interesting. And it's so correlated to philosophy. But sometimes it comes before the philosophy. Sometimes art becomes better before the culture becomes better. So, I mean, it's really interesting to read art history. So, I encourage you to go out and pursue and find the values that are yours and embrace them and commit yourself to them. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...